and welcome to Georgie's Gun Dogs at Trails for Tails Dog Training. So, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all those subscribers. I've seen it's really grown. It's been ages since I've done one of these. I uh, It's that time of year, um, you know, like they say, make hay, because I've got all the hours in the, in the day now. I like to work really hard. Um, so I'm doing a lot of day one-to-ones and evening groups and then I'm mostly hosting different type of weekends for my clients so it's been really busy but I'd like to say hello to my new subscribers and I'd like to also explain another reason why I don't put millions of videos up is is generally is due to work but also I like to keep some things back for clients and um, obviously if I put everything out for free I probably earn money but I like to still give introduction to things get people started doing the dogs I know some people have even I've seen people recommended my site um my youtube channel so that's fantastic so thank you for whoever's done that um but i did want to cover this subject um a little introduction so this subject is all about um hunting my favorite thing to do probably my dog's favorite things to do um but it's my it's my real passion is hunting i love everything about it i love how all the different breeds do naturally hunt as well it's not just spaniels i really love watching the hprs and pointers um, when they're in full flight on the hunt. There's nothing more beautiful than it, to be honest. Um, so I wanted to do a little subject. This video, I will be honest, this episode is aimed more for, let's say, your spaniel hunting. Um, obviously, because I don't own a HPR, it's quite difficult to show you how I train it. But I will cover it briefly for them who are interested. But this is the style that this trend day is for your spanners. Um, but like I said, I'll give some people some ideas for the HPRs and um, pointers that they could possibly do to build on the hunting and stuff. So, like I said, it's my favorite subject. So today we're gonna to talk about hunting, what to be aware when teach it. Because actually, a lot of people say to me once I start teaching them to hunt, oh my God, it's quite complex. And it is because every dog will have a different style naturally. Some will obviously genetically, don't get me wrong, there'll be similarities, but you've got to find what gets your dog going. You've got to find what makes them want to hunt hard, not just hoping for scent to save you. Um, and we've got to talk about, about the hunting, the patterns, use of wind, um, scent, different grounds, anything like that. So we've got, to, we've got quite a lot to cover really. Um, but in this video, after we've covered the information side of things, um, we will do a little demo of how I get the dog to basically um, start hunting and believe there's something out there or believe something is down, okay? So let's talk a little about hunting. What does it mean? What does it look like? So hunting, whether that's your spaniels or your pointers or your HPRs, that means um, you together are there to search for the game to flush it out, okay? So naturally they do this quartering pattern of left to right, zigzag, sort of like a figure of eight, um, but there is more detail in that. Um, if your HPRs, they are gonna be more further away from you. Ideally, that's how they hunt, they are rangers. Um, this is why a lot of people struggle with them at times because they don't stand that naturally, genetically, they are programmed to range above. They hunt very different to a spaniel. They are quite fast. Spaniels are fast, but a different way. They run across the ground so they get that scent. And then they would pause upon or, and point and walk slowly towards the game as they find it, where the Spaniel will hit it, bump it, so it either goes up or across them, okay? When I'm first teaching it, I also teach it to clients or even teach it to my young dogs. I need to think about, this is the, one of the most important things you must think about is the wind. The wind will affect their patterns, okay? So ideally with a young dog, I want to face wind. This will keep them tight and they will kind of hit the scent straight away. And that also teaches them to rush a bit more around you as well when while you're putting your scent down. If you have, let's say, a cheek wind or a left to right or coming at an angle, this will also affect how the pattern goes because the dog will always want to hunt into the wind because the wind will be giving the dog information of where the game is. So it affects your pattern. So if you have got like a side wind or a, an onset wind and your dog is meant to be in front of you, but they slightly move on an angle, that is a good dog. It's using the wind appropriately. The one I wouldn't start on until the dog is way more experienced 
is a back wind so this is a wind coming from behind you because what will happen is the dog will shoot out oh hello Sid will shoot out and then come back working on the wind and if you've got an ex inexperienced dog they will learn to pull forwards okay but you <laughs> but with experience you still have to train that because there's an art of how we do it and how we cast it off okay so I know I shouldn't laugh and I should edit this out, but I'm not going to. Um, so wind is really important. You always want to cast into the wind, unless it's a face wind, then you can send them either side, depending again where you're hunting, okay? So this is another thing, what's your environment? Where have you been told to hunt? What is your hunting location, okay? So if I'm going to use the hedge, but I've got a face wind, I have to cast them into where the hedge side is. You know, if I've got cover and I'm on a beat, but somebody else on my side, I'm probably going to predominantly send them more one side, depending on what I've been asked to be and what area. OK, so it depends. But majority of time with a face wind and if you've got a bit of space, you can then cast them either left or right. And what I mean by casting is that is them learning to get their nose down and start hunting from the from the base of your feet. OK, so. That's another thing that you'll have to teach them is learn to follow where your hand goes. Because if I have got, let, let's say, a left to right wind, I'm going to cast the dog into the wind. So if it's coming from left, I will send the dog into the left so that they hook into that wind so they can get hold of that scent. So it's really important you learn to teach them to go into the wind and they learn to follow your hands as well, not follow where they think things are. OK, so you've got, they also get that skill, though. You can see them winding where the wind is. They know they're likely to go there anyway, which will help move with your thing. I do have other games for this to teach um, them to follow and come off of the scent. But that is more advanced training in your hunting. This is just the introduction. Ground. When I've got a young dog, I don't want to be sticking it in bloody bramble. OK, that's the worst thing you can do. You want soft ground for them to hunt first. You need to build confidence. A lot of dogs, to be honest, when it comes to bramble, don't hit it hard until they've actually got purpose to hit bramble, i.e. game. OK, so don't think you need to get your dog hitting under bramble all the time, because if you do it with a young dog, you can actually put them off going in things and they be can become cover shy. And you do not want that. OK, I like to teach them to hunt on anything from grass you know people say oh it needs to be thick cover it needs to be woods well actually a lot of woods are quite open don't get me wrong i go into different covers white grass bracken you know hedges all sorts of cover because i want my dog to feel experienced in cover and it can manage it but i make sure it's not harsh and with a puppy i'd like them to be able to see if they can hunt a field that's not got much cover because at the end of the day if you let's say on rabbits rabbits aren't going to get up the same like birds are so they need to be very thorough on the ground. So your cover, you want soft. You'll see in my field I've got at the moment, perfect time of year, I've left a bit of grass grow. Okay, it's not thick or anything, but it's perfect for a little bit of hunting and to get the dog in. So think about your ground management, your ground treatment. That's another thing is if you were, let's say, doing competition or anything, the judge is going to be looking at how your dog treats ground. And a lot of people fall into the habit of when they're teaching hunting of doing the tick-tock or boot licking. So this is where they just go from left to right, but they're actually the heads up. You ideally want that head to the floor. You want it down. You want it being thorough. Now, a lot of the books and everything, they say the pattern goes like this. Well, if you watch a spaniel, they actually rush it more. Yes, they're doing the eight or they're going round, but they're rushing it in between. That is a thorough dog. It's checking every area. It's still doing that pattern because you do want them to go out. You don't want them to go in on a back wind or anything like that. You want them to do that, like come round, rush it through and bring it. And then they're moving like that. But in between it, there's all that game. So if you just do that, your dog is going to go of game. And it is common for dogs to miss game. That's People think they're nosy, but some game, even your, fe your pheasant's example, they will hold themselves so tight, they'll even virtually stop their heartbeat so they can't put out the scent. So you have to have a dog that's going to be so thorough that it's not going to miss. Because I have seen it in trials where someone's gone forward and the game's gone got behind. Now, that's no that, that dog will be out, you see, because it's missed game. And that's what judges are looking for. But you want that anyway if you want to shoot. You want a thorough dog. You want a dog that's going to get in everything. So 
teaching them that scent on the floor to get their nose down is what we're going to do. We're going to make a scent pocket in a nice area because this is another thing. When you're training your spaniel, let's say the spaniels, you want to keep it tight. You want to keep it tight here and you want to keep it tight there. Okay, and the reason is because on game they are going to pull you. It's, you don't mind them pulling you more that way. You don't want them pulling you this way. But you have to also recognise which breed you've got. If you've got springers, they are going to be naturally want that ground. So you've got to also allow that movement within that dog because that's naturally programmed to do a wider hunting area where cockers will usually keep naturally tighter if you train them right. But I keep them tight because in game they are going to pull out. It is the way it is. But if you pull out early in your state and you get a game, they're going to go too far. And before you know it, you're in trouble. Okay. So I want to keep them tight. So by keeping them tight, you've got to have fines by your feet, okay? You've got to have fines round your area. So they believe that if they're near you, something's always found. If I personally do not like putting a million articles away from me, and then hunting out, because I teach them to shoot out and shoot away and ping away, and they've learned that fines are away from me. I want them to find it here, okay, in this area around me i want them to hit the ground literally at the side of me <laughs> yeah okay and in the early stages you're going to see i put sun out now if i was training hprs and that that's where i would put things out okay a bit further away because that's what they naturally do anyway they if they were coming up to something that was close by they'd be on point probably before you even cast them because they are air centers they would be especially if it was wind about they'd be on it so you'd know that but if I'm training them and I want them to still have fines but work with me, HPRs or pointers, I put I do put things further out because that's what they do because they can then hunt out and then, oh, something's coming up and then you can see the point and join them and stuff like that. But we're going to talk more about spaniels. So with the spanners, I want to make that scent on the ground. So I'm going to put scent down. You'll see in the video that I'm going to put a load of scent down with these rabbit balls, tennis balls, really thing. And I make it all about, and then I'll cast the dog in. And what I'm looking for is that dog to rush that ground. Where is he? Where is he? Where is it? Where is it? And then before you know it, when they're while they're looking, psh, give them a find. Okay? So they get fined by me. Sometimes I do put balls out and leave it, so I've made a really scented area. And then I'll put really bury the balls, so they're hunting hard on it. And then they also have a find, so it's not always coming from me, because this is the other thing. You're going to have to learn a skill of being able to put your finding without the dog seeing because some get very good at it okay so in my early stages all i'm teaching is that nose to the ground okay on a bit of soft grass it's valuable so that they always learn and they're programmed to go head down head down head down head down right by you where if i've gone here fine if my hands have gone there i'm basically saying casting you off clicking you off whatever you do i personally just put my hand down i say nothing put my hand down bang in okay so that they see that hand go down that right hit that floor to the ground thank you sid okay now sid like i said you know different patterns sid is a bit more naturally needs more space in his pattern where jimmy is a lot naturally closer what have you got there hey eh? mid flight here what have you got there Bloody so he is naturally more cozy. So he's been naturally more nose down than Sid. Because Sid's so fast, he does want to run. So we've had to really work on Sid getting his head down because he is fast. Jimmy is more thorough, but you can see as he's grown in confidence. And this is another thing I'm going to say so I don't forget. When it comes to your dogs, you're going to get some who will run off the ground with hunting, straight on the back. God, love it. There are going to be some that are not quite sure so when i say keeping them tight it depends on the dog so jimmy didn't hit straight off the ground when he was a puppy so what i had to do to allow him to develop his nose is i had to walk behind him and win some woods walk behind him and i just gave him ground so i actually let him go and that's because he wasn't a confident dog in the early stages of his hunting where sid you do the opposite you do not want to let sid go because he's a running machine well, Jimmy needed it. Why are we having a tug of war on my bloody camera? Where Jimmy, I needed to allow that confidence and you could see him go, oh, right, okay, I'm taking in this ground, I'm taking in this, and, oh, and his confidence built. Once I got that confidence, then I have started to rein Jimmy back in and he loves it, okay? So, but he's more, he's naturally, he's always been senti on the ground. He's always been into things where Sid is just a love to run, but 
Sid as well, he's got such a good nose, he believes himself as well. So he's a bit like, that's why we're programmed Sid at the moment. Still, rush here, rush there. Okay, where Jimmy's always been more naturally thorough. So observe your dog. What is your dog telling you? Okay, if you've got one, oh, I don't know. I had a, I've got a particular client at the moment. At first, her dog was not confident. And again, I said, just give her some ground. Let her just go a minute. Let it go, okay? Because in the early stage, a lot of people do stick them in rabbit pens and let them have it so they build up that drive. But things like that, don't think rabbit pens are going to solve all your problems as well because some dogs, it can create more problems, okay? It depends on the dog, right? But rabbit pens have, do have their uses, but they're not the be-all and end-all for everything, Okay, so a lot of people say to me, shall I get a rabbit pen? Well, this dog just needed a loud a bit of ground. Now it's hunting like machine, okay? And she can start to rein it back in. So it depends. Like, I haven't got access to, to rabbit pens unless I went to friends. So it's like, for me, I want that dog to learn anyway. So Because if I haven't got that tool, I don't want to rely on that tool. Do you see what I mean? And a lot of you anyway who are watching this are just doing it for a bit of fun. So you don't need to think about that. But what rabbit... What rabbit... Uh, boys... Oh, what rabbit hunting does, it does make them more thorough because rabbits will not move like birds. If a bird is, you come and it's likely it'll get up. Where a rabbit, literally, you could be stood right next to it and it'll freeze, okay? So, hang on one sec. What are we doing here? You go away. Here. You go away. Go on. <laughs> no, don't want to go away. So, it does make them more thorough. It makes them hit the ground hard. It makes them check because of the way rabbits are. But not everybody has access to rabbits. So that's why we have to replicate things with our rabbit balls and stuff like that, okay? And there are going to be some of you who are never going to shoot rabbits or you're never going to be on rabbits. You're never going to be able to shoot. So it doesn't matter, right? This is just about having that fun element, introduction, getting your dog to get your nose down. Then becomes the next part in your hunting is once you've got that dog learning about its nose down and holding an area and thing, you've got to start moving it. You can't just stay in that area. You've got to teach it to move with you. And it's like the waltz. So when my dog goes out, I should be able to do a shoulder turn eventually when more experience and the dog literally comes across me. Okay, so shoulder turn, bang. So if it's gone that way, I would go that way. So in the early stages, I do like it's a zigzag. But I don't want to be doing it massive. This is another thing. You don't want to, you want to let the dog cover the ground first before you step into what we call its beat. Okay, don't step it. Some people just take off. And then they're gone and then they've missed all this area. Now, if you're on game, I likely, or even in a trial or whatever, you're likely to now miss game. And if your dog has missed game and somebody else puts that up, you're out. So you've got to teach that dog to be thorough, but you've also got to say, so actually it's not a fast process, okay? You let them go one, two, they've rushed that area, right, now I can step in. So if I've, they've done that one, two, and they're coming back here, because what we don't want them to do is what we call double hunting, which is go in the same area, because that does like a dog that's not doing it through. And if it double hunts and then finds the game again, it's out. So double hunt means gone one, two, one, two in the same area. So you're teaching them to cover it, and then you step into that beat. You step into it, so they've gone that way, right, I've stepped in. So they've gone that way, now I'm going to go into that way. So the dog will come across for me for the next part of the ground to cover, okay, and hunt. So they're going to be in it there, hunting it getting their nose down once they're covered you step into again like in the early stages you would be exaggerated but you'll see the dog will curiously want to follow where you're going you don't want to be watching dog until the dog is experienced you want the dog to see where it's going because in the early stages if you're watching a dog you're naturally going to be pushing it out so if it's gone that way you want to be looking that way they want to sort of go oh what's she looking at where's she going right all right i'm going to follow back there right i'm going to follow back there okay how your hands go as well. I like to also, this is another thing. I mean, it, this is why it's a long video, this. You know, you couldn't pause and have a brew and all that. Um, is where my hand guides, okay, I want the dog to come in. So I'm also, what the hand guidance will do is teach them that there's something here. So as they're coming across me and I put my hand there, they'll come in and they'll come low towards me and cover, okay? But I need to keep another my hands low. I see so many people chucking hands out here, there and everywhere and it's just messy. And also, if you're high and thing, you'll get some dogs who will jump at you. You'll get some dogs who will go wide on you. You keep it low. It keeps the dog low. And if they've learned that your hands are down here is where something is, they are going to, going to follow where your hands are. Okay, you two are very active today, aren't you? We're, good job we're doing this training video today, isn't it? 
So it's about learning. You'll see this all in the video anyway, okay? Because I'm going to show the initial start of it and I'll show how I bring in a bit of movement, okay? So you get an idea. And it will take you a while to learn the waltz with your dog. You'll start to have a rhythm though with them. Once you learn them, you, <laughs> you will have a rhythm. I Like, Sid is a different... Jimmy, I'm probably slower and Sid, I feel like I'm quicker because that's the way Sid is. So you'll start to feel this natural connection with your dog of how you both hunt in different styles. I, I still hunt very similar with both of them with body language, but I will move slightly different to suit what they need, okay? And also their speed, their, their pattern, everything like that. So as you can see, it's 20 minutes in and it's complex. I know people say I talk a lot, but... When it comes to hunting, I think you have to cover the detail. It is important you understand what your dog is doing, okay? And in these early stages, we want to teach them that the spanners especially, that being by you is the most valuable thing. If I stay by her, that's where the fines are. Because like I said, if you teach a dog to flush away from you, they will learn to go away from you. I don't need you here. You cast me off and I know they're there. So if you do, let's say, go beating in that, you've got to be careful what cover. You don't want them in cover crops unless you've got a solid pattern and a mature dog. Cover crops will teach them to pull forward because of the way the cover crop is, all that straight line, all that opening. So I don't personally, if I take them beating, I don't. I keep them on. Keep them on lead in in a cover crop because I don't want them to go straight. I look at ground while I'm cover if I'm shooting or anything. I look at ground and go right. I can knock you in there a little bit in there. Right back at me with heel. Okay. I don't give them everything. I also it's good for me anyway. I want them to learn that not everything. All when birds are going up, they're always hunting every single bloody bird. Right. I want to be a bit of self control and steadiness. And sometimes you'll have to be on lead. Right, because there are some drives. <laughs> what are you doing? There are some. There are. God, I'm going to keep it in though, so you can see. Bloody spaniels! You fucking wear them. Excuse my French. Um, you have to look at everything you're doing, the ground, how you treat it before you even cast that dog. Basically, that's what I'm saying. So we've covered an introduction. We've covered a lot of the. Uh, the things and stuff to be covered. Like I said, don't start putting a million stuff out. You're going to see in the video anyway how I do it. Um, the only time I might put like things away from me is to teach the dog to hunt on the pull so that they've been pulled by something. So I might put balls at the end or whatever. They know it's there, but I'm asking them to do the pattern first in front. But that is way down the line. This is just introduction. And I wanted you to know about information of it. Okay. And some dogs, this is another thing you have to remember some dogs are going to be naturally faster and more stylish than others do not beat yourself up about it it depends where you got that dog from it depends on the lineage of that dog okay if you if you want fast trial dogs that you're seeing on youtube and you haven't got a fast trial dog that is not their pattern actually regarding in beating lines i don't want a lunatic going across no, well, i'll say that don't no, sorry sid I don't want that type of rah. You want the more steady dog that's probably going to be a bit more chilled through the beating line, okay? So think about what you want to do. I mean, even if you're just doing it for fun, don't look at them and think, why is my dog hot? Not It might hunt like that, but it might not do it at the speed you want. There are some dogs who are never going to be the most stylish thing, but they can still hunt well, okay? So it depends what you're looking for, okay? Again, if you've got there and you just want to enjoy some pet fun games with them and do this, fine, great. If you want in competition and you're not happy with the hunting, you have to ask yourself, first, am I teaching it right? Two, is it the right dog for this? Will it ever speed up? Because I've seen dogs going rabbit pens and nothing changes. <laughs> so it's, it's what you want to do, right? So what we're going to do now, and some of you probably fast forward on me, I don't blame you. I know I've had the odd comment on that, but that's just how I am. You either love me or hate me. I'm a detailed conversation. I like people to understand all the information. What I'm going to do now is you're going to see in the next following clip how I introduce it, okay? And I'm going to do a little demo with both boys so you can see the difference in how they hunt. Um, and then I will show you how I'm in movement on, okay? So... If you have any questions about hunting, I probably have still missed some stuff because I know I could go all about it for ages. But this is a good one as well before I go, that even if you're never going to work your dog and you have a hunting breed, let them have the outlet. 
because you will my guys if they've been hunting sleep the best they are the most chill if you give them the outlet they don't seek it either this is another thing so do it for fun whether you're doing any gun dog training or not just do it for fun for that breed suit that outlet so they get what they are wanting getting what they need okay right i hope you enjoy the clip of the first introduction to hunting okay i hope you two have not tired yourselves with all that play anyway See you later guys and thank you. Okay, so here is the video of how we're going to introduce the hunting. Okay, so you can see I've got a nice little bit of soft grass here. Not too long, not too thick. Nice and gentle for Jimmy. Young dog, don't want to expose him to a million covers that are too rough because I want to build his confidence, okay? So in this video we are going to look at teaching him all i'm looking here is him holding this area in front of me and getting his nose down okay and i like to use rabbit balls and tennis balls for this sometimes i put them out and bury them sometimes i make scent it depends what i'm doing and all i'm looking for is him to scent the ground hunt the ground be thorough okay unfortunately today i've got no bloody wind which is quite annoying for this video but it is what it is we have to use with what we've got and the time we've got so I want to teach him here that if he holds the area, eventually he'll have a fine by me. So a few things to be aware of when you start this. You do want ideally a steady dog, okay? You do want a dog that is comfortable dropping um, tennis balls or handing you back tennis balls or rabbit balls. Don't just do it on a dog and you've got delivery issues, okay? Because you're gonna be having a battle midway, which will not make it a productive learning for the dog or yourself. If you need help with your steadiness regarding when stuff is putting down, get a friend or a family member to help you. But ideally you should have worked on this in the earlier stages in some of the videos if you've been following steadiness so that they can learn and sit and watch you doing something, whether it's throwing or putting something to the ground. Okay? So make sure these things are in place. Um, I like to do some steadiness. Sometimes I will hide the dog so they don't see what it's going in, so they might cover their eyes. Sometimes I might just sit him up so they're watching and I'm tricking them. But you're going to see I'm going to make scent with my rabbit ball. I'm going to touch a bit of the ground. I'm going to flick things where the rabbit ball's in so they're not quite sure where everything is. Then I'm going to let him do it, hunt the ground, and then I'll put the, the ball down when he's not looking. Okay? But I want them to be really like work hard at it, put it in, get in there, get finding it. OK, so it's also teaching them to make sure they're thorough with every bit. But you've got to make sense thorough. If you struggle bending down or whatever, you can put some like rabbit dummies and you can put them on a string and drag them about as well. Here's another option later down the line as well. If you want to get them to use to game, you can drag rabbits around, you can drag birds about and you can make the area scenty and the dog can hunt on it. So there's a variety of ways you can make scent. But ideally what you're teaching them in the early stages is nose down, get your nose down, hunt the area, bang, you'll have a fine by me. If you're thorough all the time and you hold it lovely and you're really detailed with your hunting, there's a fine by me at some point. I'm also building value being close to me. When they find it, make sure there's a big fuss there, okay? Celebrate with them, awesome. Say, so remember that find, oh, that was worth it. You'll drive them more back into it. Another thing, before you cast them off, you want them ideally sat in front of you. This is so you can send them either right or left, okay? Look at my hands as well, where they're going low. This means you should kick off and hit the ground there. So when I do put scent down, as you can see, I will do it from the, where the nearest to the camera is and I will bring it back to where I am. I, I start furthest away and I have right up to dog because if you go away from the dog and your last point of call of scent you put down is away from you, what will happen is the dog will shoot forwards to where the last place they've seen scent go down. So think about where you're placing your scent. It's important it's by your feet where you're going to cast it, okay? So that it has that scent and it's going to kick off straight to the ground and smell around there, all right? So I'm going to put Jimmy here for now. Sit. He's going to watch me put the scent down. And make sure as well in between this, when you have put your scent, so I've got my rabbit ball. When you do put your scent, you can see I'm going to drag it around on the floor, my, where things it's been. Yeah, putting it around. I've got to try and keep it in the camera for you, so he's going to do a really tight pattern. 
and I'm dragging it all over the floor, swirling it, getting it in, things that have been on it, so it's touch, moving that about, you probably think I'm nuts, but I am, so getting it all in that area, and you can see I'm doing it, working my way back to Jimmy, right, so it's all there, all that thing, get it out, every little detail so that's what i'm saying if you can't do this you can put things on a string and do it even your rabbit ball and drag it around make that area scenty so you're gonna have this find anyway getting every little bit in okay so then i have him in front of me and i'm paying that stillness there for being in front of me Okay, I'm not putting my whistle in my mouth yet as well. I don't personally put my whistle in my mouth till I've cast the dog. This is because sometimes some dogs this can bring noise out. Okay, so you need to be very calm. Make sure your dog is calm before it goes hunting. If it's on the edge, it will make noise. We don't want noise. Okay, so now I'm going to cast him in. That's what I'm looking for. He's straight on my area there. And I'm just going to stand here. I'm not doing anything. I'm wanting him to look for that thing. Yay! Good boy! Here! Good lad. Thank you. As you can see, this is what I'm saying to you. This time I want a bit longer from him. Jimmy is not the fastest at the moment, depending on ground with him. So this type of ground, he won't rush it hard. Put him in bracken or woodland, that's where he excels. So we'll also find what your dog loves. So for him tomorrow, I'm gonna to take him to some woods and he flies in there. Yeah, but I'm not bothered at this stage if I'm in introduction, I just want them to learn to get their nose down, okay? to go again good lad good lad good lad good lad so keep that encouragement <laughs> so he is finding a bit he is finding on me he's quick He's found what I want. But if I've got better cover sometimes, what I can do is I can be quicker with that, okay? But what I'm pleased about is he was working harder then to find it. That's what I'm looking for. So let's say I do want to have him find it or bury it. You can edit that out. Okay, so what I might do this time is I'm going to nap Jimmy. Oh, you're loving it now, aren't you? Sit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bury a ball, okay? So I'm going to really dig it deep, make sense, make him believe it's up to him, and then he's going to hold it. So this time he's going to have a find not coming always through me as well, but in my area, all right? So I've just already buried one, but I'm going to use another to make that area. Yes, so he thinks somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> 
other way to avoid obviously him finding it, me throwing it, okay, is but you can see how I'm getting him to hunt that ground, get in, get be in there thorough. You can see now he's a bit keen on it, okay? A couple of other things I might do is I might throw something out so they get that. They think they've seen something else fall here. Bang, they come back, I lift it, Jimmy. They lift, I lift it, they go back in, they rush it, okay? So it's just that initial, what am I getting for it, okay? So I might go, put that in. Get it? boy yeah so you see so that was a little introduction what I'm going to do is show you with Sid is a bit of movement okay we'll make sense first so you see the difference of dogs but here what we're going to do next with Sid is get the movement in as well so you see how we start the movement with the dog okay this was initial just about getting the nose down and be quicker on your burying than me, it's okay? So I'm so, usually I'm pretty good at that, but today was on it, all right? But like I said, another thing you can do is put your hand over the dog depending on the dog. Jimmy's not a particularly fan of your handle in his face, so I don't bother with Jimmy. I'll distract him and then I'll put something in. So again, it's how you do it, okay? I might distract him behind with something, scatter feed, put in, bit of long grass, bang. He's not seen it go in and then I just send him in, bang, he'll on it. Again, usually I like a face wind. We haven't got much wind today. Well done, Jimmy. Good. So in this clip, you're now going to see a bit of movement, a bit more of a wider thing, different way a different dog moves. I'm still going to put scent down, but I want you to see how I move with Sid, okay? And like I said in the video, in the conversation, it's like the waltz, okay? Eventually, you should be able to do your line and you're just turning, only ever so slightly. Yep. So I'm looking for when they go out, I would then go through. And again, like I said, once they've done that one, two, I would step in. Okay, so if he's gone one, two, and he's gone out, I'll step into his beat, let him go. One, two, things. It's like a rhythm. One, two, one, two. So they learn, and you're not taking up too much ground. Also with an experienced dog, you need to sometimes stand still while they do it. You don't need to go straight off, so many people take straight off. Stand first, let them do it, then go in, okay? Don't just go, all right, we're off, because you just push the dog away from you. You make them pull away from you. So being steady and slow, the dog will more likely to be, still can be fast, but will be more thorough, all right? So I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna put scent on a bigger distance here. So we've got this beat, so you can see Sid flow okay come across me he hunts very differently from jimmy which you'll see and this is what i want you to see the different dogs jimmy is still gaining confidence certain ground jimmy will fly ground like this he just he's just a bit more steadier and slower that's fine as long as he's doing what i'm asking which is nose down and finds by my feet i'm not looking for him to be speedy gonzali in ground that's quite difficult and that's another thing you need to make sure your ground is scented for them appropriately Going on dry ground will just make a dog have its head up and swing, okay? You don't want dead ground to hunt on. So I'm going to there, put it down, put the scent, and then I'm going to let him do that. He will have the odd find as we go along. And again, I've got to be fast with this. Now, sometimes I might put more balls out sort of thing, but I'm getting the pattern now. So I still need the scent to keep the nose down, but we're working as the pattern. And I still want him to believe the finds are here. The other thing is when the finds are by my finger, sometimes I'll put my hand over the find so that when the dog does go out and they see my hand go down as I'm turning, they'll come into me because they believe a find's there. So where my hand is going, they are looking, thinking, right, I'm going to check that. So that helps as well. So if they're pulling away from you or anything, they, you put your turn whistle on, which is later down the line, put your turn whistle on, they'll come back into you. 
okay, whether they're out there or at the side of you, they're coming into you. So they're learning to be thorough. All right, that hand down. So if you're coming across like there, bang. Gone that way, hand here, okay? It depends. Sometimes I might just swing with my shoulder. Depends what the dog is doing. If I feel like they're about to pull, I could, that hand is a bit of an indicator to the dog to come back in, okay? So I'm going to put my scent out. having face in front and I'm always reinforcing in my training this position okay so they learn it it's habit is training I'm always training I'm not just gonna stop stuff because thing I'm letting that dog know okay so you can see he's keen to go so he's just gone one two so I start Turn. So you can see he's swallowing my hands, he's looking. goes out I took so because he's quite wise this game I'm gonna do my little throw out as well again see that he thinks something's gone down and then I'm gonna let him rush it okay they are quite clever at this game because they know what we're doing because naturally now with him I wouldn't do this as much I would put the scent down and just hold it so he's always learning close but when it's movement I give him more ground so he can really get his purpose in and for him here the finds it's for him this is not ideal now for the stage this dog is at so again it depends on the stage your dog's at okay so it's you're so smart thank you you're so smart but you see now he was a bit more purpose there he believes someone's down because he's seen something went down again again that's that looking for something when they feel like they've believed they've seen it so again like i said some of them because I know where it is so he goes across with me bang right so we also learned that if he moves with me he gets the find okay so he 
believe in me, but I'm now going to come across and you'll find it, yeah. Yeah? So that's another way you can do it, is by having it a bit away from you, but still in the area you want them to hunt, but you move away, then come across, they've learnt that following you as well will also discover things that I found. Where's she going? Every time I go with her, I find something via, okay? So she is getting something right, so they believe you. Okay, but you've seen our rhythm there. Every time I turn, you did. Sometimes because he wasn't having purpose, you could see him lift his head up, which I ideally don't want. But I have to obviously do this for the video because we can't have, I can't stick him in certain ground at the moment. Why I'm doing an introduction to hunting because otherwise errors will be made. But like for him tomorrow, he's going to go in woodland and I'll get none of that. He would just absolutely go in cover and it's how they do it. They go into cover. So make your sense in the cover area so they learn to hit cover as well. You know, you want them to go in and out of bushes, through things, anything like that. That's a good game finding dog. Okay. So that is the introduction to your hunting. All right. And thank you for tuning in for such a long video. It's a full on episode, I suppose. Bloody hell, it's a longer than Corrie. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it. All right then, cheers, and I'll see you later. Bye.